Hello and greetings everyone. My name is Steve. Welcome Bull Runners. Welcome to the Bull Runners community. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day today. In this video today, I want to discuss Make a DAO. I just want to highlight it and what it does. It plays a major role in the space, especially with all these with all this information that we're hearing in regards to stable coins, um, deep pegging, etc., etc. I'm really not uh, worried about USDC as they are 100% backed by cash reserves and US Treasury bills as well. It's just a matter of time that they'll be repegging back again. Um, so anyway, uh, today's topic is Maker. I just want to discuss this. The Maker, they're the ones who are actually issuing the stable coin, the decentralized stable coin DAI. It's basically in a form of a lending platform where you need to collateralize the minting of the DAI, the stable coins you want, and you can use your ETH as collateral and it has to be over collateralized and then you can mint a certain percentage of DAI against your ETH collateral. All right, let's start with Maker. Maker right now, it's the 60th largest cryptocurrency based on coin market cap. And uh, the total supply is really close to our own, which is at a million. That's the total supply. Now, I'm sure you're surprised if you see one price of it and uh, of a project that actually holds the same amount of tokens. Well, also has a max supply of a million tokens and you see this price. It might seem so outrageous, but let me tell you something because it only has a 697 million market cap. Now, uh, what's interesting is that's not even the all time high. As a matter of fact, let's look at the all time high. All time high was actually is actually down by over 88 percent. And uh, it's it was at uh, 6,339. That was, of course, back in 2021, uh, the year of the most massive bull run ever. Like I said, Maker is a governance token and they are actually the ones issuing DAI stablecoin. Um, with this token, you can vote on how, for example, adding new collateral assets for the DAI, you know, to, to mint your, to mint more DAI, like I said, or mend any risk parameters, meaning that in increasing the percentage of the collateral or even just to upgrade the platform. So you can just vote with this token. And the use case is that they're issuing a truly decentralized stablecoin, which is over collateralized uh, by Ethereum. And then you can mint your own DAI, which is the stablecoin. And that's the major use case. So let me show you the stablecoin. Uh, let's go to DAI here. DAI is actually ranked number 13 after Tether, USDC, BUSD, and now DAI is the fourth largest stablecoin in the space. As you see, it's also uh, de-pegged. Uh, DAI has a high USDC exposure as it's using that as collateral as well. The reason why I pointed out DAI, this is the, like I say, this is the use case that they're the issuers of DAI and they came up with a brilliant idea of using over collateralization of ETH to mint your DAI token. And once you pay back the loan, basically in DAI, you'll be able to redeem your collateral in Ethereum back. Now that said, let's get back to Maker. Keep in mind, Maker only has 1 million tokens. As you see, we also started with only a million in token supply. Now we're currently at 981,160. So we are closing in on 19,000 tokens that have been permanently banned and removed from the total supply. Now, this brings us to today's topic. It's very important for a token to be deflationary. And especially if you zoom out and look at the entire lifespan since uh, 2017, you can see that this is a very common picture that we see here. You can go to any project that was around during this time in 2021 and you'll see the exact same chart. It spikes, everything goes all the way up and then it comes all the way down crashing again. Now, the point I'm trying to make in this video is that while on our way all the way up and even all on our way all the way down, what has the token in itself retained? 
We heavily focus on the use cases of project, which is very important, but we also just as much have to lay emphasis on the mechanism, the tokenomics of the token itself, because at the end of the day, it's the token that really matters because it's the tokenomics of the token that will sustain the project, right? So in a project, you have to be, sh you have to make sure that for the long run, it has the right mechanism in place, the right tokenomics in place that it does the following. It retains liquidity. It remains deflationary by burning the tokens and that in incentivizes those who are participating on the staking platform to be able to, to get distributions. In our case, Bullrun gives you USDC distributions for participating in the staking platform. The whole point that I'm trying to make here is that here is a project that has been around since 2015, initially conceived 2015 and fully launched in December 2017. So it's been around between six to eight years. It's one of the oldest and the first projects in the crypto space on Ethereum, actually. It's a decentralized stable coins that are using the over collateralization of the asset. So back to what I was saying during this six to eight years and especially going through the biggest bull market in the history so far, um, I ask myself, imagine if die if maker had our mechanism in place and uh let's be specific if maker was to retain four percent liquidity on every buy and five percent liquidity on every sell if they were to burn one percent of the tokens from uniswap and remove them completely and forever from the total supply if they were to distribute two percent on buy and three percent on the sell to those who are utilizing their staking platform in the form of USDC distributions. I wonder where this project would have been now. This video is just to see how based on the chart and based on the amount of time that they've been in the industry and based on how they went through the biggest bull run ever in 2021 and came all the way back down, how much liquidity did they retain? How many tokens have they banned and how much USDC distributions have their holders gotten for participating on the staking platform? So these are the questions that I'm asking myself. So community, the point that I'm trying to make in this video is that for every project, regardless of the use case, it's very important to pay significant amount of attention and into the token itself because this is what makes the platform sustainable. What's very what's missing in this space are projects that are heavily focusing on retaining liquidity. And that's what Bullrun is in the space to do. Bullrun built an ecosystem which the main purpose is to solve liquidity issue. And that is something that is overlooked in the space. That's why we are very unique in this space as we have a whole ecosystem focusing towards building a healthy and sustainable liquidity. And we do that by offering the staking platform. We have a dual staking platform and it's based on the volume that is generated organically by the, co by the community members and by the holders of the token through the trades. Bulldozer is something very unique. Those who, who decide to participate in the staking platform, they're receiving the USDC distributions and then can decide whether to compound the USDC to get more BRL, which will generate even more volume, or they can do whatever they decide to do with it. And now the true burn, which is very, very important because every project needs a burning mechanism. We have a very strong burning mechanism in, in place in our ecosystem where with every trade, 1% of the BRL tokens are removed from the total supply forever. And as you see here, when we go to Etherscan, we are closing in on 19,000 tokens that we've already burned with a relatively modest volume. So this ecosystem is very unique in its place and BRL is actually specifically solving the liquidity issue and the whole ecosystem and the mechanisms put in place are here to assist with that, with just that. In order to boost your USDC distributions even more, we have NFT boosters in place and these are the boosters which you can mint. You can stake a maximum of five of these 
with everyone boosting your USDC distributions up to 6%. So five of these will bring you up to 100% of your USDC distributions and you'll be able to have a larger share of the USDC distribution pool. And all the revenue generated from these NFT boosters go right back into the liquidity in the form of buybacks. BRL is very unique in this space. It's not a copy paste with all these mechanisms in place with the sole purpose to retain liquidity, to ban tokens with every trade and remove them from the total supply, making it extremely hyper deflationary and also incentivize those who participate in the staking platform by offering them USDC distributions. And these are unlimited as long as their trades happening. Community, this is something that I just wanted to point out. MakerDAO is one of the oldest projects on Ethereum network and their use case is the DAI stablecoin, which is an over collateralized stablecoin that you can mint. Right now, they're currently using Ethereum that you can use as collateral and then mint a certain percentage a certain amount of die based on your collateral. It is a decentralized stablecoin that is over collateralized and that you can mint in your own personal vault. That's very different from the three largest stablecoins we are accustomed to that are centralized, which are just backed by either cash reserves or treasury bills. That's their use case of MakerDAO. And uh, if they would be also just as focused on their token, it would have retained a lot of liquidity it would have banned many tokens and those who are participating in the platform would have been uh, incentivized even more to participate in the platform. So this is the video for today, Bull Runners. Uh, I just wanted to make this comparison of how important it is to also have strong fund fundamentals and strong tokenomics that build towards a very sustainable, stable and deflationary token. That's what's missing in this space a token that is heavily focused on retaining liquidity because liquidity is the bloodline of a project. As long as there's liquidity, there'll be trades going on. And the goal of a bull run is eventually to have the deepest liquidity in the space. And we have the platform and mechanisms and the tokenomics in place to achieve that. Thank you very much, everyone. I want to wish everybody a wonderful rest of their day. And as always, let's keep in touch.